Now, let me tease you a little bit here, chat. We can't go into Ulduar yet. Sorry. 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 We can't go there yet. Because we have to do Uldamon. So, Uldamon is a big stone vault built by Keeper Arcadius and Irania. Uh, and Tyr. No. Was Tyr dead by the time Uldamon was constructed? Pretty sure. Because they had the discs, that's why they brought them here. Tyr gave them the discs, they ran away. Tyr dies. Uldamon gets built. Dwarves get put into stasis. This is the vault. This is where that happens. So this is uh, as the curse of the uh, flesh is spreading through the Titan Forged, And these uh, three keepers and watchers fled south with some of the uh, survivors. They decided to put... This is not Wrath. Decided to put them in stasis. Hold them on. So... We'll just, we'll just, we'll just go through. It should give us the information that I think is in here. So, in here you'll notice that there are trogs. For those who don't know why, trogs are a de-evolution of earthen. That's what's said anyway. It's said that earthen are crafted, and we're gonna learn about this, and that within them there is a stabilization matrix. And this is inside of all of Titan, all Titan Forged. And what occurs is when the Matrix undergoes a high-stress situation, high-stress environment, it can destabilize. In other words, it can disorder. And what can happen is you can either have a degradation, which is what results in trogs, or you can have um, an evolution, uh, which is what resulted in dwarves, okay? So the, the trogs, because they're more primal, less intelligent, and, uh, you know, Savage beings, they're not approved of by the Titans. They do not like them. Um, they're disorderly. They're not very inquisitive. They're not very intelligent. And so the Titans don't think that they deserve to exist. Um, art on the wall in here uh, can be quite interesting to look at. I don't want to surpass, you know, just pass that up. We do have this going on. I'm assuming Irone and Arcades. This reminds me big time of Io from Greek mythology. People that know mythological art pieces better than I would. would. That's a reference of a real life image. Yeah, uh, it looks pretty, pretty familiar. I don't know what it is though. So the meaning of said image could be relevant for uh, why they put it on the wall. You know, why would you just put that on the wall for no reason? Big stone keeper, big book, can't read it, big sad. Makes me big sad. Can't read it, makes me big, big sad. So anyway, these uh, trogs are not considered acceptable deviations from the, uh, from the intended design. So they don't, they don't really get treated very well. Vault door that we know nothing about but has art on it, yet again. Very Greek god-esque. Oh, definitely. The painting looks like Mars and Venus. Could be. Staff of Prehistoria. Pretty sure the Staff of Prehistoria gets brought up again in exploring Azeroth Eastern Kingdoms. Pretty sure they talk about it. Pretty sure they talk about all the relics of Uldamon, actually. So that might be fun to read about at some point. Hell, I have the book behind me, so maybe I'll just grab it. Oh, that's the boss. Revelosh. Some luminaries in Ironforge's prestigious Explorers League have theorized an ancestral link between their people and the Trogs, and pointed towards the Trogs' hoarding of Titan artifacts as a reflection of Dwarves' own reverence for such wondrous devices. If that's true, the Trog known as Revelosh can be considered the Trog equivalent of an archaeologist, although any historically-minded adventurers who encounter him would be more inclined to call him a thief. And so we just kill him. Very cool. Here's that city map chamber. What do you suppose this is? Is this a map of Uldamon? What is this? Because this is a new is a new Uldamon too. It's the city underground in New Uldamon IMO. That's the full scale of the area. That's kind of what I think too. 
Also, there's a keyhole in the top of this tower. Oh, that's a clickable thing. It's literally a keystone that I stick the key in. Oh, that's literally part of the dungeon. Yeah, yeah. I guess I forgot about this. None may steal the secrets of the makers. It just like unsealed the fucking order on that door. Did you guys see that shit? Oh, f she's coming in hot. The Titans did not construct the Oldemon complex directly, but utilized various servants to create its megalithic halls. The Pantheon entrusted the Watcher Ironea with overseeing the construction and maintenance of Oldemon, but as time passed, the once awe-inspiring vault fell to ruin. Within the map chamber, Ironea has spent millennia in a form of stasis, analyzing the original master plan drawn up by Kazgaroth and attempting to find a way to restore the complex to its original functionality. So it's interesting that they, in Chronicle, they kind of portray this as like, this is the Keepers doing. This is what they were doing. It's interesting to me that in Vanilla, that this is directly drawn up by Kazgaroth. Like, this isn't the Keepers making the Watchers. No, no, no. It's the Titans through them, utilizing various servants to create them. Even though, <laughs> even though it's kind of depicted like, oh, they're just doing it themselves. I think that's very interesting. All right, let's see, let's let's move on here. Oh wait, she has some stuff in there though, I think. I think there's something in her room. Land by Kazgaroth, so Uldaman was a facility to help building the, the land, some type of uh, additional purpose. Kind of what they, she's literally just locked in a fucking crypt. That's fucking scary. The Chamber of Kazmul. Don't worry about the chamber, my boys will check it out. You have more important things to do. Not really. The true goal in Uldaman is to obtain the Discs of Norganon. Yes, it is. The secrets on these discs could change everything about how we view our world. Countless secrets of the Makers are inscribed on them. Their value is beyond any material wealth you could possibly imagine. The problem is that Arcadius, an ancient and powerful creation of the Makers, guards the discs with a venerable army at his disposal. I need you to defeat him and secure the discs for the Explorer's League. Done. That's why I came here anyway, so I'm glad I picked the quests up, because that's exactly what I was after. Here's some... Some of this, uh, some ancient pottery. Once again, very Greek. Can't tell if hair coming down or severed head. Can't tell. And here we have earthen. Now these are earthen that have not succumbed to the curse of flesh. These are going to be similar to the earthen that we see in Kazalgar. Notice that they have gems embedded in their fucking heads. So, I don't know if that has anything to do with how they have retained their form. Ancient Stone Keeper. One of the many golems that staffed and operated the Great Titan Vault, the Ancient Stone Keeper was part of a small group that served as an intermediary between the Watchers left in control of the facility and their many servants. With the corruption of the Obsidian Sentinel, the Ancient Stone Keeper is the last of its kind, performing its duty by protecting the secrets of the Titans as best it can until its inevitable shutdown. <laughs> Titan Power Core. Oh, I don't like that. Simply looking at the core instills you with a feeling of complete serenity. Yeah, I don't look like, I don't like that. I do not like that at all. And remember, it's one of these green, it's that same green texture I showed you guys in fucking, in fucking Ulduar that I was like, yo, these remind me of Aenar. And when I think about Serenity, I think about the Emerald Dream. And when I think about the Emerald Dream, it's really hard for me not to think about Aenar. Considering that they put the earthen into a fucking sleep. Hmm. It literally fills you with peace and serenity. That's kind of terrifying because if you feel that way, uh, you know, you might just be unbendingly obedient because you just feel good all the time. It's like being drugged. And I don't really like that. And I think that the Titans have basically drugged Azeroth too to keep her asleep. Because I think she's supposed to wake up. I think, you know, she wakes up does all the cosmos creation stuff, gets tired, goes to sleep, 
But unfortunately, before she could wake back up, as things are... Well, maybe it's part of it. Yeah, I mean, I have a whole theory on it. I'm gonna get into that later. I have a pretty... I have a pretty big theory on universal oneness regarding Azeroth, and, uh... And I, I do think that it's correct. Um, but we'll see, though. We'll see. I'll get there. That's a different video, different topic, different time. Obsidian Sentinel. Now, this one, Obsidian also, I mean, obviously being a black stone, something typically associated with, uh... Well, we've seen Obsidian Destroyers in the Anubisath ranks. Um, we've seen, uh... I think we've seen, uh... Tolvir use the power of Obsidian to escape the Curse of Flesh as well. Uh, so that's interesting. And Obsidian is created from massive lava flows, by the way, so... Didn't know. Not all I know about it, in terms of what I can just recount. The Obsidian Sentinel was responsible for guarding the Uldaman's secrets until it was corrupted by an unknown force. Originally crafted from the same stone as the Halls of Uldaman itself, this Keeper has had the majority of its body replaced with dark glass, capable of reflecting spells. Whatever was responsible for the Obsidian Sentinel's transformation must be incredibly potent, for it is not easy to alter the enchanted stone of a titan construct. Obsidian Reflection, Splintered Obsidian, and Obsidian Shard. So that's fun. This is one of the, remember the, the, the quest that we got? He said, I fear one of the old gods is responsible for this, and you're gonna help me see if that's the case. So that guy thinks that an old god is responsible for this thing turning to obsidian, which is a curious thought. Pretty sure it was Deathwing who showed the Tolvir how to uh, use obsidian to subvert the Curse of Flesh, if I'm not mistaken, and Deathwing was corrupted by uh, not one, not two, uh, but three old gods, so kind of a big deal. A faint dark whisper emanates from somewhere within the core. So it's the actual power core inside that is obsidian. Remember, the other one that I collected but moments ago was not that. It was... Titan power core. Simply looking at the core still instills with you a feeling of complete serenity. Whereas this... A faint dark whisper emanates from somewhere within the core. Isn't Obsidian also related to the Black Dragonflight? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This art is literally on every wall in Uldum. What the fuck is that? Interesting. Some ancient pottery. Uh, when I see this pattern, it kind of gets me, because it reminds me of the stuff on Amon Thul's wrists, on, like, the cuffs of his robe. He has, like, a very similar pattern to that. Kind of makes me think of him a little bit. This looks like a, a back entrance or something. And also, I didn't get credit for killing that for some reason, at least on the dungeon. But this stuff isn't what I came here to show you, frankly. What I came here to show you is the information on the discs of Norganon. Galgan Firehammer, Shadowforge Geologist. What do these guys have to say? So these are Dark Iron Dwarves. By Thorisan's beard, slay them! Reacting to the discovery of Uldamon by Bronzebeard Dwarves, the Dark Iron Clan mounted an invasion of the Vault to stop their ancestral foes from accessing the powerful artifacts within. Galgan Firehammer, a senator from Shadowforge City, was sent to oversee the continued excavation of Uldaman so that the Emperor may harness the artifact's destructive potential against the Dark Iron's enemies. So this guy works for the guy that you fight at the end of Blackrock Depths. Or Blackrock Spire, or whatever it is. That sounds like medicine? <laughs> Could be. Could be, you never know. All right, on to the meat and potatoes. The stone vault. Once again, we see this motif of uh, the stone, the stone guy holding up the pillar, holding up the world. We saw that in um, Halls of Lightning uh, and Halls of Stone as well. Me, Grimlock, king. They have language. 
You know, I, I, I hate to say this, chat, but what we do here with the trogs is immensely f***ed up. I'm just saying, dude. This is f***ed up. Like, these are basically free people who have their own language. It just kind of, I don't know, man. I don't know. It seems really f***ed up. This is like how we treated f***ing tribes in Final Fantasy. It's just not a good look. In trog society, the biggest, strongest, and most vicious trog often becomes chieftain through displays of power. Not that dissimilar to ancient humans. Grimlock is a comparative genius in that he has maintained control of the Stone Vault Trogs through intimidation and what might be considered crude psychological warfare. Having trained a deadly basilisk, Grimlock uses the threat of petrification by his beast to keep any would-be usurpers in line. Pretty f***ing smart. Pretty f***ing smart. To be honest. Pretty f***ing smart. Might not sound nice. Ancient humans, we stopped. Yo, true. Yo, true. So, I want you guys to start thinking of a concept here. Let me point something out. There have been multiple cases where we have a baseline being. Okay? Take Zandalari Troll, for instance. Take an Eridar, for instance. Take a Dwarf, or an Earthen. You're in a neutral state, one might say, and they can either go forward or they can go backwards, okay? The way that it is positioned in this game is that the base version can go two different directions, but I'm not so sure that that's actually what's happened. I think that when you see species devolve, I don't think that it's just them changing into something that they've never been. What I think is that they're reverting, mostly, to the original. And so, that would... The reason why I say that is because the Titan Pantheon shows us in the Argus the Unmaker fight that when they reoriginate, when reorigination goes off and hits mortals, there is Titanic essence left behind. They gather the Titanic essence and they Titan forge with it. Guys, that gives away the fucking farm. Don't you see? They reoriginated the planet before they ever built Titanforged. They can't just make them from nothing. These mortal, these stone races that they created, the Vrykul, the dwarves, the gnomes, I don't think that they're original designs. You feel me? I think the mortal races existed in more primal forms before the Titan showed up. And I think they worshipped the old gods. And I think that the Titans showed up and were like, mm mm. And instead of creating something original, because they don't, they reoriginated them and used their essence to make Titan Forged. And what happens is that they destabilize and either can change, they can change in multiple ways, I guess. In the case of Earthen, they can turn into a dwarf, which is basically just a flesh Earthen. Or they can turn into a trog, which is not the same thing. The same thing occurs with the Draenei, when they're severed from their powers of the arcane and light. Or when they're around fell too much, they turn into broken. My question is, are they really turning into broken, or are they turning back into broken? Into Krokul? What are they, originally? Because I don't think they always look like Draenei. I think they only look like that because they were ordered. So... I would say the same thing about humans. I think humans probably also used to worship the old gods on Azeroth. Now, I know Draenei aren't from Azeroth, okay? So that's a different thing. But I do think that Vrykul were made... They're, it's just copies. They're just copies. They're not, they're not real. Or they're not originals. So we, so we existed as one thing. They Titan Forge us and became a second thing. Curse of Flesh turned us into a third thing. You could look at it that way, or you could simply look at it as... We existed as one thing, the Titans literally imprisoned us, and then the old gods set us free. You could look at it like that too if you want. Would not Fel destroy the Titan essence? That's honestly what I'm starting to think Fel was specifically crafted to do. 
to undo the ordering nature of Titans. That's what I'm honestly starting to think that's literally exactly what it's made for. It is such raw entropy and chaos that it undoes this, I think, the soul level ordering. Because this shit is not just happening to your body. It's not just your body. It's not just your mind. It is your fucking soul. They order your soul. It, down to the point, this is what happened to the dragon aspects, where some aspects of your personality even change and you don't even realize it's happening. What does that sound like? <clears throat> Domination? Domination? Sounds pretty similar to that. Just like, just think about the proto-dragon who got locked like Razageth. She... <laughs> Razageth, yeah, I mean, that's... Well, that's a little different, but yeah. Imprisonment is what the Titans do. They are prison builders. That's that's all they can do. Altar of the Keepers. Here we go. All right, last room here, chat. And then we get to the discs. So, Arcades is placed in a magical, dreamless sleep. All right, Arcades. Let's piss you off. Wake up. Guys, I'm making a little bit of Omega. Put the Omega's up on the table. Who dares awaken Arcadus? Who dares the wrath of the Makers? Bro, I'm like almost sure that that's Chris Metzen. Ha! <laughs> I'm actually pretty sure that's Chris Metzen's voice. That's him. That's awesome, dude. I love it, dude. He's awakening them. And I got the Arcadic Stone. Nice. So even though it says dead, I guess he's not dead dead. Aurora Sphere. Journeyman's Backpack. Wow. And here are the discs. Did I do it wrong? Why can't I access the discs? Remove with Kata? Really? Interesting that they would remove it. It's kind of annoying. Okay, well, we're just gonna fucking look it up then. The Lore Keeper of Norganon. Here we go. So this guy is not appearing for us because go fuck ourselves, right? So, okay. Listen to this, chat. This is pretty important. So the Lore Keeper's knowledge. When you talk to him, this is what he says. Salutations. My function is to offer access to, and when permissible, insight into information regarding the creator's synthesis of the earthen on the world designated as Azeroth. I am ready to share this information with you now at your leisure. Who are the earthen? The earthen are a synthesized race, engineered by the creators, functioning as one of the seed races in the initial population of the world designated as Azeroth. The Earthen were created to aid the Creator's efforts in shaping the deep regions of the world. Pay very close attention. Please, please, please. This line is fucking insane. They are a modification of the standard subterranean being matrix used on other worlds that the Creator's have seeded. They are a modification of the standard subterranean being matrix used on other worlds that the creators have seeded. Yes, it's talking about the Titans, chat. The construction of this prototype race created various anomalies that were observed after initial synthesis. What is a subterranean being matrix? It is one of the synthesis matrices the creators use when seeding a world. Each synthesis matrix is used to achieve the creator's goals. For Azeroth, a subterranean being matrix was modified to create a being with increased durability and with an affinity for deep region shaping. The earthen are the product of this modification. Do you see what's happening here? After the earthen had been put into service for the creators, unforeseen anomalies were discovered that affected their synthesis matrix due to high-stress environments. What are the anomalies that you speak of? Additional background information on the Earthen must be given to you before this question may be answered properly. To understand the anomalies of the Earthen, it is first important to understand what the Earthen represent in their design intent. The Earthen represent the Creator's attempt at improving the survivability paradigm 
of the standard subterranean being matrix. Survivability, immortality. This was done by incorporating a resilient foundation of construction inherent to the world into said matrix. They built them out of stone, chat. What is a resilient foundation of construction? It's the baseline material used in ray synthesis. A cross section of Azeroth's crust was used as the foundation for the earthen synthesis rather than the typical biomass construction foundation used by the creators. Let me say that again. Let me just say that again. Um, the a cross section of Azeroth's crust was used as the foundation for the earthen synthesis rather than the typical biomass construction foundation. Flesh, it's flesh, chat, used by the creators. Research on the world's composition led the creators to theorize that an enhanced being could be synthesized that would epitomize the resiliency of this world's essence. This was accomplished by choosing to use a blend of Azeroth's various stone core components as the foundation. It's an alteration to what they normally make, chat. They're admitting that they normally make flesh beings, that the earthen are a design iteration. It's different, that they're meant to represent the survivability, improving the survivability paradigm. That's why they're made out of stone and why they aren't flesh, because they're meant to be immortal. The earthen are made immortal on purpose. The standard subterranean being matrix was modified to create a being with increased durability. That's why they're made of stone, with an affinity for deep region shaping. The earthen are the product of this modification. This is so fucked up, dude. Listen to this. After the earthen had been put into service for the creators, unforeseen anomalies were discovered that affected their synthesis matrix due to high stress environments. What are the anomalies? That's what we got into. To understand the anomalies of the earthen, it's important to understand what the earthen represent in their design intent. The earthen represent the creators, the titans, attempt at improving the survivability of their standard subterranean being matrix. They were too mortal. They didn't want mortals doing it. This was done by incorporating a resilient foundation of construction inherent to the world into said matrix. Then we talk about the cross section like I just talked about, rather than the typical biomass construction foundation used by the creators. Research on the world's composition led the creators to theorize that an enhanced being could be synthesized that would epitomize the resilience of this world's essence. Looks at Magni Bronzebeard ma being made of diamond and talking to Azeroth, and the, the dwarves literally uncovering like most of the fucking secrets of the titans because they venerate them. This was accomplished by choosing to use a blend of Azeroth's various stone core components as the foundation. Stone core components, so interesting. Maybe an allusion to the, you know, to the literal stone core, but regardless. So the earthen were made out of stone? Simply stated, this is correct. The earthen's physical features are that of a smaller stature humanoid, though their composition is that of Azeroth's various stone core components. Their design maximizes strength and stamina without sacrificing cognitive processing power. Their skin and musculature are nearly impervious to physical damage, and with very minor modifications, the earthen display a remarkable resiliency to unwanted magical forces. Whoa. Anything else I should know? It's integral to the assimil assimilation of this data that it is understood that the Titans wanted to synthesize a race that would long be an integral part of this world's development cycle after they departed. This race would be instrumental in fulfilling the creator's long-term development objectives for Azeroth. This makes my skin crawl, dude. As an ancillary note, the nomenclature Earthen was deemed appropriate for the new race by the Titans, based on the Earthen's composition. I think I understand the creator's design intent for the Earthen now. What are the Earthen's anomalies that you spoke of earlier? The Earthen's only anomaly in synthesis is the tendency for matrix destabilization while being utilized in high stress environments. The curse. <laughs> ah! The curse of flesh, dude. The anomaly in synthesis is the tendency for matrix destabilization while being, and if you click matrix destab, it links you to the curse of flesh. <sighs> they fucking lied and everyone believes it. That's fucking crazy. That's fucking insane. Deep earth sculpting was naturally suited to the new matrix design and thus never met the qualifications of duplicating a high stress environment. 
The stabilization was not discovered until well into the Earthen's primary service cycle for the Titans. The Titans began work on post-synthesis modification rather than recall and resynthesis. Recall and resynthesis? That's what we call reorigination, chat. That right there, that's what that means. Recall and resynthesis. Reorigination. That's fucking terrifying. But they decided to work on it after the fact. You know what? We can work with this. We can work with this. Let's let's see if we can what we can do after the fact instead of just starting over. What high stress environments would cause the earthen to destabilize? There's a noticeable pause after you ask this question. The information you request is not currently available in this repository's data cycling. I sincerely apologize for this omission. Please request this information after a data cycling update has been performed on this information repository. You may also request this information from another information repository located in Azeroth. <gasps> Which is what we go to Ulduar and do with Bran Bronzebeard, which I just showed you guys, the Tribunal of Ages. Which is what, which is where Bran Bronzebeard gets the idea that the old gods were the ones responsible, right? What happens when the Earthen destabilize? And there's probably going to be stuff on this in Kazalgar, too. Uh, there are two potential results when the Earthen Synthesis Matrix destabilizes, initiating visual aid representation number one. The first variant matrix is a degenerative product of synthesis, hereby designated with the common nomenclature of Trog. This variant maintains strength and stamina compared to the Earthen, but its cognitive processing power has been almost completely compromised. Force of will and a strong sense of cunning are the only driving factors in the psyche of the Trog. That's not true. I don't think that's true. Trogs? Are the Trogs you mentioned the same ones in the world today? I'm unable to process your chronological reference in comparison to the recording of this data. My apologies. The Trog retains some composition of Azeroth's various stone core components, but the loss of cognitive power makes this variant unacceptable to the creators. The Trog procreates as per a standard biomass, mortals. By default, it consumes stone and anything else it can acquire, including other Trogs. Cannibalism is considered unacceptable by the creators. <laughs> Cannibalism is often tied in with sacrificial and ritual magics, chat. Don't you think it's funny that the blood trolls of the fucking Zandalari are completely exiled for what they do? You mentioned two results when the Earthen destabilized. Not because it's also not scary, but we know that that's more akin to the old ways of the trolls. That's what they say. What is the second? You mentioned two results when the Earthen destabilized. What's the second? Initiating visual aid representation number two. The second resultant variance of the Earthen Matrix retains many desired elements when compared to the standard subterranean matrix. The common nomenclature for this variant is Dwarf and Galakrond, true. The variant retains strength and stamina inherent to the Earthen. In some cases, the Dwarf even exceeds the cognitive powers of the Earthen's matrix. The Dwarf, however, retains none of the physical composition of Azeroth's various stone core compounds. Dwarves! Now you're telling me that dwarves originally came from the earthen? The data stored in this repository does indeed correlate with your astute proclamation. The dwarf maintains an affinity for the stone composition of Azeroth, but due to the high stress environmental anomaly within the earthen synthesis matrix, the dwarf reverts to a default biomass composition as seen in the standard subterranean matrix. And there it is. There it is. High stress environment. The curse of flesh led the dwarves to revert back to default biomass composition as seen in the standard subterranean matrix. The titans do not normally make things out of stone. It's not normal. They normally do sub standard subterranean matrices, biomass composition, flesh. They fucking lie about it. And they pin flesh as a curse on the old gods. They're so fucking st it's such it's so stupid. Makes you wonder if the curse of flesh really came from the old gods, what is it? What is it actually? Because it's the spirit of life that turns the orcs into flesh, that turns the Magnaron into flesh. What did the flesh is his gift, he is your true creator line really mean? Well, most people would say, oh, it's Yog Saron, but I'm not so sure about that. The creators view the dwarf as an acceptable variant worthy of Genesis in its own right. So the Titans liked the Dwarves so much 
that they'd be willing to intentionally create more dwarves. The King of Diamonds has been made a pawn. Hmm. Sure has. Listen to this. Who are the creators? The creators are the creators. They are the beings that seeded and shaped this world by their own design. They are the reason for this world's existence, as well as many other worlds. They are the wellspring from which Azeroth flows. This is a lot to think about. The creators are cognizant of the magnitude of the information housed in this repository. Subsequently, a portable copy of the data stored here will be made available to you once you're attuned with the discs of Norganon. Please consider your cursory requirements for the assimilation of this no knowledge to be complete. At your leisure, access the discs of Norganon to begin synthesis of your discs. Cursory. Rapidly and often superficially performed or produced. Please consider your cursory requirements for the assimilation of this knowledge to be complete. Uh-huh. You got it. I'll access the discs now. Thanks. Very fun. Uldaman is fucking insane. And they tried to make everyone come back and do it again for a reason, I, I would think. Even if you don't get all that same dialogue, it's... it's I think it's to make that brain... That brain work. You know? 